Hi everyone, hope you're keeping well. Um, on today's video, I'm going to be doing a, a complete service of a vintage uh, Fleischmann uh, locomotive. Um, this locomotive has been sitting um, on a shelf or in, in this box um, for over 30 years, approximately. Um, and uh, furthermore, um, this locomotive, the 4700, uh, was manufactured uh, between 1960 um, and 1973. And so even if we were to assume that this was manufactured on its final year, uh, it's just short of a 50-year milestone since manufacture. So um, I will be doing a series of videos on the different eras of the um, Fleischmann uh, locomotives uh, and servicing of them because they're, they're slightly different uh, as you go through the generations of them. But I figured I'll take you through this one because uh, my assumption is that it is not perhaps going to run. Um, Fleischmanns have always had uh, ring field motors uh, perhaps since inception um, and they themselves have evolved uh, with various generations of them. Um, but the ring field motors were really um, cutting edge at the time and um, many manufacturers use them um, however um, Fleischmann did the best job with the ring field motors they were very solid um, robust motors however uh, ring field motors uh, or some people call them pancake motors um, had a uh, inherent drawback um, in the design in the sense that they actually had a disc uh, commutator uh, which was prone to getting fouled um, due to lubrication of, of the spindles. Um, and, um, and so more than likely, I haven't put this on the track yet, but let me just kind of predict perhaps that it's more than likely not going to budge but uh, because of, of perhaps the gunk on it. But either way, um, here it is. Um, let's take a look here. So these are... Perhaps a first generation, first or second generation uh, Fleischmanns when they started building the uh, North American models. This is a North American F unit. Uh, they came in various different uh, railroads: Santa Fe, Burlington Northern, etc., etc. That they made, they made them. And you'll notice that this one um, doesn't have much weight to it because they transitioned to the metal bodies a little bit later on. Uh, but they also had metal bodies prior to this prior to this time frame. So it's very interesting the different phases Fleischmann went through. Okay, so I just switched the light around so you can see the inside here. But uh, uh, the typical design of these um, older Fleischmanns was that they had one truck or one bogey that was had the ring field motor placed above it, and it drove both the axles on it, and the other truck or bogey was purely meant for um, ele electrical pickup and as you also see inside this one is absolutely hollow inside there's there's no weights inside this one um, and just just happened to be by design of that era of, of um, manufacture um, in any case uh, I believe uh, the detailing and so on was phenomenal for the age and the time of manufacture I uh, mean most others didn't have that much detail on their on their molds um, and Fleischmann did invest a lot, a lot of money at the time uh, to build uh, uh, some good details on their um, on their models. All right, so let's try and place it on the track and let's see if it moves. Uh, I'm, I'm doubtful, but uh, let's see what it does. So here it is on the track, and I'm just gonna. Uh, this one has been modified. Uh, seem to have an LED being placed in here as well. So um, let's just put, give it some power and see if it uh, if it moves. Uh, well, there we go. The LEDs are lighting up, but as I suspected, it does not want to move. So we're going to have to uh, pull it apart and. Uh, Give it a good, uh, give it a good cleanup and service um, of the ring field motor itself. 
All right, so the next step is I'm going to take you through is a, a servicing of one of these um, older Fleischmann Ringfield motors and locomotives. Okay, so let's take a look here. So this is the older generation with the spring clips uh, that are inside that holds the, the truck in place. Um, so let me just put this on my... Okay, so let's just pop this out. There is the locomotive. There's the motor, sorry. There's a lot of gunk in here. So there's a lot of a lot of gunk in the axle. Okay, so I just zoomed in the camera a bit, and oh, here you go, and you can take a look here. Um, I'm trying to get a reflection off the, off the commutator right there. It is totally fouled up. It's got a lot of gunk on it, um, so it needs to be cleaned out thoroughly. Let me see if I can spin it around a bit. Yeah, it's got a lot of gunk on it, as you can see the commutator spinning there, uh, and it's just... Yes, and this is typical of all these Fleischmann Ringfield motors, where where you when you lubricate the uh, the bearing here, whatever lubrication goes in gets spun out due to centri uh, centrifugal force, and it actually um, gets thrown out onto the commutator and then gunks up the commutator. So I do have a solution for that, and I'll share with you as we go through the uh, um, service process. Okay, so let's just take out this. I'm just going to remove the... subframe of that. It comes out fairly easily. Need to clean that out. Wow, that's really gunked up. Oh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of carpet uh, carpet fibers caught in the axles as well. Yeah, I think we're gonna pull it apart. Okay, so let's just take this motor apart. Just the three screws holding this faceplate 
intact. So one of them is a little bit stubborn. I typically check, take the uh, the uh, the shell off these locomotives, but uh, this one seems to have some lighting soldered inside. So if I do that, I'm going to be uh, putting some stress on that wiring there. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Now uh, take this out, and oh wow, as you can see, a lot of dirt uh, inside the commutator, and there's even carpet fibers. Let me just zoom in here. And so look at this, there's a big um, ball of fibers that is stuck on the commutator and the, uh, and the brushes and it's fully fouled up. And that's typical for these motors. I just uh, put some paper at the bottom here, this is too much gunk coming on my, my table. So here is the ring field motor and as you can see it's uh, pretty fouled up with a lot of gunk um, on that motor as well on the commutator. And so this is um, a, your typical weakness in these ring field motors and it's not just the Fleischmann's it's, it, it applies to any ring field or pancake motor used in, with, with Hornby and and, and Bachmann's and lifelikes and etc. etc. They all use the same technology. Although Fleischmann ring fields were one of the best out there because they were well built. They had metal chassis, um, frames, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to take the uh, the brushes, and they're also equally gunked up. I'm going to put them aside for now because I'm going to be cleaning them later on um, as I put them uh, back on. Make sure you don't lose the springs um, because they tend to they tend to um, travel all all over the room if you don't if you're not careful. Um, and this is all this place plate inside is all dirty as well, including the the brush housings. I typically pull them out and clean the inside of that as well. Okay, so when you take these brush caps off, again be careful not to. Hold on to them too tight because if it slips off the pliers, this is going to go flying across the room again. Okay. Now we're going to clean. We're going to, we're going to clean the uh, the face plate. We're going to clean the um, the brush housings and the inside of the face plate. Now, typically, most people would use uh, isopropyl alcohol, but I will not advise to use isopropyl alcohol for the following reasons is because most commercially available um, isopropyl alcohol uh, is of the concentration of maybe let's say 50 percent or um, 70 percent or maybe around there but either way it's very hard to find 99 percent um, isopropyl alcohol so the problem is if you start using alcohol that's of a um, higher dilution, what ends up happening is that as the alcohol evaporates, you leave a res residue of water behind. And that will then tend to oxidize uh, wherever it sits. Um, and it's not even visible to the eye most of the time. Uh, and that will give you some really horrible contact and it'll make, make you figure out why your locomotive is running so, so bad. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why I never use isopropyl alcohol anywhere has to do with a locomotive when it comes to uh, elect electrical contact. So what do I use? I use 
um, plastic safe electrical contact cleaner right so I mean I have one here uh, it, it's just another generic contract cleaner but it's plastic safe I've tested it myself um, and so uh, well at least this is what I use and it's so far has been good on my on my on my tracks etc etc so why do I use electrical contact cleaner is because it's designed exactly for that it's designed to cl clean your contactors and electrical motors uh, your brushes your commutators etc etc and leaves res re zero residue behind uh, and that's the purpose of contract contact cleaners and so i've been using that for years now and it's been absolutely phenomenal um, and so i'm going to use the same right now on this on this motor and you'll see how it actually cleans up okay so i've i've got these uh, tapered uh, cotton buds gonna use that to clean the the housing here inside of it it's going to be probably gunked up black and there you go that's just one cotton bud that was uh, <laughs> that's the amount of gunk on this thing wow and I use the other side to clean clean it up and you see how well, how well electrical contact cleaners work. It just removes all the all the dirt in one pass and the residue in one pass. Okay. Now I'm going to use a regular cotton bud. To clean the uh, the inside of the uh, wow, this is atrocious. Look at the amount of dirt on this motor. And again, this is the residues that actually ends up oxidizing. So, and as you can see, it's starting to evaporate already. And this is what was on that plate. There's that. Now we're going to do the same for the commutator inside here. Just going to make sure I clean up the inside of the frame. Good grief. And now we're going to clean the commutator with the same contact cleaner. You're going to see this come alive um, right in front of our eyes here. And this is the fundamental flaw with these ring field type motors. And contact cleaner just easily removes all that gunk without any kind of polishing or any kind of um, abrasiveness on this commutator. As you see the side of the cotton bud just to polish it up. Just 
still more there's still more dirt uh, on these uh, cotton buds now one more step that we need to do is um, I'm going to be using some toothpicks as you can see here and again pardon my fingers they're all gunked up now from that uh, from the dirt on the locomotive so I'm taking a toothpick here and the reason why if you look in in between uh, the spacers of the commutator there's a little a little ridge uh, or a little valley in between them that's to separate the um, the coils from each other now it's extremely important to clean between them and remove the residue from there and why should we be doing that is because the gunk that's pretty much sitting in between there consists of um, the uh, powder from um, the from your carbon brushes which basically it's conductive and that powder conductive powder sits in between these two plates and will start to create a, a conduction which you wouldn't realize because the motor will start to operate erratically and won't actually have a good momentum to it um, and pretty most often than not been running at higher speeds it'll tend to flare up and flame up and start to fold your entire uh, entire commutator so what you do is you use a, use a toothpick here and you basically just clean in between them. And you'll see many people on YouTube, uh, on servicing channels will show you how to do this, the same thing. And now we'll just take one more cotton bud. Put on some fresh contact cleaner. And uh, gonna wash out the residue. That was uh, remnants by cleaning those gaps. And as you can see, it looks much more cleaner now and much more defined. Now, some people actually polish these, but I'm not a fan of doing that. Just uh, because most of these commutators actually have a coating on it, and you tend to polish it, you'll remove that coating. Well, that's the difference of a clean commutator now. And so as you can see what happens is as one lubricates this uh, uh, this bearing uh, the lubrication travels down to the bottom of, of the commutator there and um, and due to some centrifugal force it just splatters all the way out into the uh, the face of the commutator all right so now next we are going to clean the rest of the locomotive well before i put the um locomotive back before I start to service the remaining part of the locomotive, uh, there's one more step that I do um, for all um, motors that I actually take apart and for servicing before I put them back is that I actually check um, the impedance between uh, each each commutator plate. And, each bit, and that what that actually does is to uh, check the impedance of each coil uh, in this three-pole motor. Now, um, Various manufacturers have different impedance on these ones. Fleischmann's tend to hover around the uh, uh, 14, uh, 14 ohms, or sometimes I've seen them as high as maybe uh, 16 ohms or 17 ohms sometimes. I've seen other locomotives have had them as low as 4, four ohms and 5 ohms. This depends on the type of motor and the amount of uh, windings on the, on the, on the coil, um, on the armature actually. Okay, so let's check this one first. Uh, and why am I doing that? To make sure that, number one, all these coils are actually electrically conductive and working as designed. And secondly, I also want to make sure that each coil has the same strength um, within them. And you can easily identify if you have one weak coil. 
for example somebody leaves a locomotive like this sitting and feeds a lot of voltage to it you could actually start to fry one of the coils because it's not moving and you're just giving all the power to one of them and it's unable to spin okay so let's take a look at the uh, the impedance of each of these ones i'm going to zoom out here a bit so we can have some space to see my multimeter over here i don't know how i'm going to place this so you can see it but uh let me give it a shot uh, okay well yeah how about that let me put something here to hold it in place there i think you can you can see the multimeter now and so here are my probes i got it on impedance so let's check um, and you can pay attention to the um, the scale, or at least on the, uh, the the reading on here, and let's see what what this one gives us. Okay, so I'm just trying these two. Oh, that's uh, that's fourteen. That's fifteen fifteen ohms. So that's pretty much bang on what it should be. Well, at least what I've seen in most Fleischmanns. So the, so we know that one one coil is functioning properly there. This one is also 15 ohms, which is, well, 15.5 or 16, well, 15 ohms, which is great. It's also conducting as well, and it's also the same, same strength. And this one's also 15 ohms. Oops. Yep, this is also 15 ohms. So we got all three, um, all three coils, the same strength, uh, and are functioning good. Okay, so that tells you that the electrically this motor is in good shape, just needs to be serviced and cleaned up. So let's move to the next step. All right, so now I'm gonna focus on the transmission. Um, as you can see, it's got a lot of gunk in here, but it does have these circuit clips I can pop out and, and remove those gears and clean it all up. So um, this one I believe requires a, a full overhaul. So I'm gonna be doing that right now. And this is where these things tend to fly across the room, if you're not careful. There we go. So I've placed them in a specific order, the exact order I took them out, so I know exactly how they uh, how they should go back. And if you're not sure, I would recommend just recommend taking a quick a picture of um, of the transmission before you take it apart. And that way you have a reference uh, as you look to put them back together again. But for this video, I'm not going to be doing that. Oh, this one's bone dry in there. Oh, that's a small circle clip in there as well. Now, t putting this back is another story. They're easier to take off than put back, but... A lot of gunk inside these wheels. I'm gonna get that removed. Okay, so I just cleaned those axles in there a bit, um, and I will be using some contact cleaner to clean that up as well. Uh, I'm not going to pop these wheels out because I don't want to lose calibration of the gauge, um, but because they seem to be in fairly decent shape, I'm going to be cleaning this all up with, uh, with contact cleaner, uh, and then we'll put some brand new flesh, fresh uh, lubricant on it.
All right, as you can see, the gearbox is starting to look um, much better, and you can start to see the metal as opposed to just the uh, but the, the proper face of the gear wheel as opposed to the dirt on it. Okay, I'm gonna use this opportunity to clean in between here as well. See the dirt that's coming out of the wheels. Okay, so I think we're done with this for now. And I'm just going to do the uh, the gear wheels that we removed. I'm going to clean those up. And uh, make sure you keep a mental note or take a photograph of which one goes where. There's uh, a lot of dirt on these wheels. Yep, that one's clean. And I'll uh, just clean the circuits as well here. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to put them back. Sensing some binding, and look at that as I was cleaning. Look at the dirt that just came out of that gear wheel. Okay, 
So I already put the circlips back on this one. Well, that one went pretty easily. There we go. Now I will be lubricating all of this uh, in a bit. I should might as well do it now. All right, so I, I use two types of lubric lubricants. Um, one, which is the um, the Hobby Lube, um, and I got medium oil. I, I tend to use light, but I can't find that uh, that bottle. So, um, so I use. Um, the uh, Hobby Lube medium oil uh, for uh, all gears and the bearings, except for anything that comes close contact with the motor uh, and or the commutator. So for this bearing over here and for this bearing over here, in between the gear, I will be using a different lubricant. And what I use here um, it's called conductor lube and by no means am I endorsing these products. It's just I'm just sharing with you what I use um, and so um, Conductor lube is, is, is an amazing a product. I find uh, it does two things. It actually lubricates your 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 bearings, but it also is con extremely conductive and so it's also be designed It's also designed to be used on um, on commutators as well to help uh, lubricate your uh, the commutator and the brushes while being conductive so that's why i put conductor lube on the bearings uh, on the motor this way even if it actually makes its way to the commutator it'll actually in fact improve the conduction and not uh, hinder it or impede it okay so those what i use that's what i use so it's going to lubricate these right now And all you have to do is put just a dab of oil and not too much. Most people over lubricate their locomotives. And you have it going all over the place in, in, in the transmission. That's it. Just work it, work it a bit so that it uh, makes its way around. And I'm just going to put a little bit, a little dab right behind here because this is where it 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 uh, contacts the chassis. So it's just cleaning the uh, brushes over here, uh, putting some contact cleaner on them, and soaking it in contact cleaner and cleaning them up. And you can see the amount of uh, dirt that comes out of it. So, just want to make sure I share that with you as well. Okay, so now we're going to reassemble the motor. Place the faceplate. And the uh, long screw actually goes over the insulator here. Okay, and now we're going to mount it back on the uh, on the chassis. Get 
There's one. Okay, so we got this motor back, and as you can see, the uh, motor is spinning freely. And now we're going to lubricate the spindles. Actually, maybe I'll put the brushes in first. This is a part I kind of dread sometimes because these brushes tend to fly around. And, uh, let me just send the camera here and now it's going to put the caps back on. Okay, so we've got both caps back on. Nice and snug. We're done with the motor. Now we just got to put the lubrication on the spindles. So again, I'm using con conductor lube, and this is meant for um, bearings. Just one little dab, and that's it. On there, and we'll spin it around and put a dab. Also, um, get a better view here. There, we'll put a dab right in between this. Uh, pinion gear and the uh, bushing, the bearing. It doesn't matter if it gets on the gears because it's also a lubricant as well. It's actually a better lubricant, but okay. And then put some on the axles here, but I can do that actually later on too. Clean up the uh, subframe. Sorry, the uh, the truck frame. go and before we pop this back in I'm going to put a little bit of lubricant um, on the um, on the slider here because that's why it pivots back around and around and it takes a curve Okay, now let's work on the rear truck. This one has a inset screw as you can see there, so I need to remove that. That's the only thing I think I need to do. I 
actually I just need to pop it out here. So there you can see the contact points. Just need to clean them all up and put them back in. Wonder if I can pull these axles out. No, they're also pressed in, so I'm gonna have to clean it while it's in place. But I might be able to uh, remove the vipers. So I need to pay attention, the black and brown wires are at the top, by the look of what it's facing out that way. So I'll place these the way they were. Okay, so now I can clean this whole piece. Again, I use contact cleaner because, uh, again, this this truck here, his own his sole function is to pick up the electrical power and feed it to the motor, so it needs to be absolutely clean. And we've got to have no residue back left in here, so. As you can see, I'm cleaning the, the back flange of these wheels because that's where the pickup point is. And now we will clean the wipers. Again, remember, I believe the brown and black one on the top, so that's what we have it, and the locomotive facing that way. So now we're going to spin it around and do the other side. sufficient pressure you don't want to have too much pressure against the wheels yep 
seems good. I only use conductor loop on these because this is all about the conduction now to the motor. All right, so I think we're done. Now we just need to put on the track and see how, if it actually runs. All right, let's see what what we uh, what we have here. Okay, let's uh, put it on the track here. Okay. All right, let's give it a shot and let's see how it goes. Wow, look at it go. So here it is running after being in storage for almost 35 years. And this locomotive has been in the family for I think almost 50 years. It's running very well. So you can see the caliber of Fleischmann locomotives, you know, once you, if you keep them clean and you service them, they'll last forever. Now this particular locomotive was, uh, was given to my dad by his brother, and my dad has had it ever since. And so uh, here it is back on the track again. definitely brings back memories okay well hope you enjoyed the video and the uh, the steps I went through to service this locomotive if you have any questions please don't hesitate to put them in the comments uh, and I'll be more than uh, happy to uh, respond to you Thanks again for watching.